Good evening. It's six o'clock on Friday the 4th of August 2017. Welcome and thank you for joining us tonight for the English edition of Aura News, bringing you the day's national top stories translated into English six days a week. The Civil Emergency Service have reported 15 new fires in the past 24 hours in areas across the country such as Tiran, Lor, Dibur, Elbasan, Shkodr, Fir, Berat and Leja. 109 firefighting teams assisted by 24 firefighting vehicles, 90 military forces and some helicopters have all been battling the blazes. According to the Civil Emergency Service, the situation has improved at Daiti Mountain after the intervention of helicopters, but the firefighting teams and military teams are monitoring Daiti Mountain to see whether any hidden blaze reactivates. The situation is further aggravated in the Dukat village near Logara Park as strong winds assisted the spread of the flames across a wider area. The emergency service has requested assistance from their European counterpart to battle the blaze. Fires continue to rage in the Debra areas where intervention has been difficult due to the mountainous terrain and a considerable area of bushes and pines that are burning. Fire reactivated again in the Libraged area where a large number of bushes and pines have been burned. Three hectares of medicinal plants were burned in Shkodo. The Civil Emergency Service reports that a substantial area of bushes and pines were also burned in Fir, Berat and Leja. The Civil Emergency Specialists are keeping the situation under constant monitoring throughout the country because the danger of fire persists due to the hot weather. Once again, the Civil Emergency Service reiterated its appeal for citizens to call emergency phone numbers should they see any signs of fire. The Minister of Interior, Dritan de Mirai, held a meeting lasting 40 minutes with President Ilir Meta, reporting on the fire situation across the country and the measures being taken to combat them. According to an announcement from the President's office, the President took interest in knowing what the responsible authorities are doing in order to tackle the difficult situation. The President has called on all central and local authorities to continue with their efforts. President Mehta added that the intensive communication between authorities is required in order to effectively take the necessary measures and come to the aid of the citizens affected by fires. State police today arrested two people for deliberately starting fires, a crime which the Minister of Interior considers to be a crime against national security. A 46-year-old person stands accused of setting fire in the Shankol village, while Vlora's police arrested a 37-year-old person accused of lighting a fire in Karabarun. The Minister of Justice, Guzman Bardi, has decided not to approve the requests for resignation by the directors of the Offices for the, for the Registration of Immovable Properties. Through a statement issued to the media, the Minister of Justice requested an administrative investigation be completed first, and then he can approve the directors' resignations. The Minister adds that there will be legal proceedings in the case any violation is found by the administrative investigation. The resignations of the directors came as a result of a public call by the Prime Minister to do so, with the accusation that the directors have openly violated citizens' rights. The announcement by the Minister of Justice emphasised that he has decided an administrative investigation on the activity of these officials must be completed first, suspending the proceedings of their resignation until investigations have concluded. Three separate groups have been established to conduct the investigations into the directors to ensure an efficient process. According to the announcement, the deadline to finalise the resignation decisions is 10 days from the date the suspension order comes into force. The Minister confirmed that if a public official has made any violation, they will be dismissed. However, later in the day, the Prime Minister's office reacted to the decision made by the Minister of Justice, announcing that the Prime Minister has annulled the order from the Minister. The Prime Minister's office stated that the resignations of the directors cannot be refused and that the administ administrative investigation can still continue without any obstacles. If the investigation verifies a violation of the law has occurred, the directors will see justice. The Albanian government has a code of behaviour approved at its first meeting. Not a single minister, be they a political or provisional one, can violate this code. The government is not a group of people who act as they wish, but a team that is headed by the Prime Minister. 
It functions based on the preliminary approval of the Prime Minister for any administrative action or any communication from the Ministers to the public, reads the announcement. A few days ago, the Prime Minister asked the directors of the offices for the registration of immovable properties to tender their resignations because of the high number of complaints against them and for failing to solve the citizens' problems. Democratic Party MP Yorida Tabaku gave an interview with an Aura News journalist commenting on the Prime Minister's tour of hearings and the massive di dismissals of directors. She stated that this is a testimony of the bad governments these past years, a ploy to distract citizens from the problems the government created in order to trick them into thinking that they fixed them. According to the Democratic MP, the real problem is the corrupt system that has flourished under the governance of the socialists. For this, she directly blames Prime Minister Eddie Rama. MP Tabaku th thinks that the government the Prime Minister is promising to create over the next four years is in fact an exact copy of the Democratic Party's program. Despite this, the Democrat MP says that nothing will change, as according to her, the Prime Minister is only truly focused on abusing power. MP Tabaku adds that Albania is no longer attractive to foreign investments because of high informality and high taxes. The Democrat MP announced that the month of September will be a month of challenges for the Democratic Party. However, she promises a strong opposition will emerge, which will denounce any government abuse and will return hope to the citizens. The City Hall continues to make investments across Tehran. The latest addition to the list of projects is a residential block in the Salit area, which is finally undergoing a complete rehabilitation after 30 years. The mayor inspected the work, which has already started, and called on citizens to be cooperative, liberating occupied spaces which hamper the realization of projects that benefit the wider community. This is an area with a lot of informal constructions. 90% of the citizens are cooperative, and the 10% that do not cooperate should understand that we must be civilized. The City Hall is working hard to serve the citizens despite the high temperatures. If the citizens do not cooperate with the City Hall, it makes it difficult to build the Tirana of our dreams. The mayor went on to add that such interventions require sacrifices by everyone so that work can be completed in a timely and qualitative manner. We will all sacrifice something. We will make the sacrifice by working extra hours under high temperatures. Others must make the sacrifice of liberating public spaces so that we can, work, uh, we can complete the work uh, properly without having to do it again next year, said the mayor. Mr. Viliai also commented on the drinking water situation and sought understanding from citizens, saying, as we are waiting for the rain to fill the water reservoirs and resources, it is paramount to keep saving the drinking water. To waste water means to leave someone else without any. We have 90% of Tirana's territory under control and the water tanks continue to deliver water to problematic areas. Kosovo's parliament gathered again today with the aim of establishing both the assembly speaker and the vice assembly speaker. However, the parliament of Kosovo failed once again in achieving their aim due to the absence of the coalition that received the majority of votes in the last parliamentary elections on June 11. Enver Hojai from the Democratic Party of Kosovo has requested the election result to be respected and for the coalition to be allowed to propose the Speaker of the Parliament. He said that the coalition may agree not to propose Kadri Veseli for the post of the Speaker of Parliament. The head of the Democratic League of Kosovo's parliamentary group said that there's still no consensus for the continuation of the session. The Self-Determination Party's parliamentary representative said that the coalition is trying to postpone the continuation of the session as much as possible. The interim speaker of the Parliament of Kosovo has called a meeting for all representatives of the parliamentary parties to occur next Wednesday. That's all for our English edition this evening. My name is Alexandra. Please join me again Monday through Saturday at 6pm for your local news in English. On behalf of Aura News, thank you and good night.